from History Broadcasting Studios here in New York. Today is April 12, 1945. Jeff Franklin is in Warm Springs, Georgia with the President, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Richard Simpson is in Washington covering government operations while the President is taking a short holiday. First, we go to Warm Springs, Georgia and speak with Jeff Franklin. Take it away, Jeff. Hello, HBS. I'm here in Warm Springs, where the president is up in his private getaway. We are hearing some stirrings coming from the presidential quarters. President Roosevelt has been signing papers and sitting to have a portrait painted, or so we have been told. It is also reported that the president was complaining about a debilitating headache. The president came here to Warm Springs about two weeks ago, under doctor's orders, to help him recover from what looks to be exhaustion. To those of us in the press corps, the president hasn't looked in good health in quite a while. Rumors abound that the reason that Harry Truman was picked to be vice president over Henry Wallace is the possibility that should he be elected to a fourth term, it would be a strain on the health of the chief executive. We now go to Richard Simpson in Washington. Go ahead, Richard. I am standing in the halls of the United States Capitol Office building. The Senate, led by Vice President Truman, has just been let out of session. Truman has basically been doing his constitutional job as leader of the Senate over the past 82 days that he has held the post of Vice President. No one is sure if the Vice President and the President are even talking to one another. We know of only two times that Truman has been to the White House since taking office. I am seeing if there are any representatives to speak to about the current situation when it comes to government. It looks like there are lights on in Sam Rayburn's office, the Speaker of the House. Maybe I can find out something from him. Wait a minute. Vice President Truman just came out of the Speaker Rayburn's office and is almost running down the hallway. Maybe I can catch up with him. Mr. Truman, Mr. Truman, can I get a word with you? Not right now. I've been summoned to the White House. I have to get there right now. Maybe later. There you have it, HBS. Mr. Truman has been called to the White House. Not sure what is going on since the president is in Georgia. I will follow up and let you know when I can. We are hearing that Jeff Franklin with the Presidential Press Corps in Georgia has something breaking there. Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you, Robert. Those of us in the Press Corps are not sure of what is going on but an ambulance came out of the access road to President Roosevelt's private cabin about 10 minutes ago. We have no idea the reason for the ambulance or even who was in it. Back to New York. In the HBS News studio, I'm Robert Knowles. Details are very shaky at this point as what's really going on. Jeff Franklin in Warm Springs, Georgia, is reporting that an ambulance has left the presidential retreat. No word as to who it was called for or to why. Richard Simpson is reporting from Washington that Vice President Harry S. Truman has been called to the White House for something very important. Again, we're not sure why. If one was to speculate, a logical conclusion would be something has happened to the President. Again, this is only speculation. But since the Vice President was called to the President's office at the White House, and the President is in Georgia, it makes sense. However, it is important to note that there are very few facts at this point. Speculation, while logical, can be wrong. Wait a second, I'm getting something. This just in from the wire services, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, 36th President of the United States, is dead in Warm Springs, Georgia. The President has apparently had a cerebral hemorrhage while sitting for a portrait in his private getaway, where he has been for the past couple of weeks. Very little information other than what has been reported just now is available. And we now return to Jeff Franklin in Georgia. Go ahead, Jeff. HBS. The news of the president's death has just been reported to us here in the press corps. Many of us are standing around puzzled. We don't know what to do now. It would seem that all the news is now being made in Washington. With that, I switch over to Richard Simpson in the House Office Building in Washington, D.C. Go ahead, Richard. Thank you, Jeff. People have started coming out of the offices here in the new House office building. Sir, sir, do you have anything to say about the news of President Roosevelt's death? Not much, as we are quite busy. But apparently, we're going to have to start answering to that rube from Missouri. Now, please, look out. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt is dead. Harry S. Truman, on his 82nd day of, as vice president, will become the 37th president of the United States at a ceremony within the next few hours is not sure when. 
There are many rumors surrounding what the new president does and does not know. He has been noticeably absent from the White House, spending most of his time presiding over the Senate. It is unknown if he knows anything about the current situations in the war in Europe and the Pacific. There are reports that Mr. Truman met with Eleanor Roosevelt in the White House right after the news broke to them that FDR had died. It is also being reported by anonymous sources that Mrs. Roosevelt said to the soon-to-be president, is there anything we can do for you? For you are the one who is in trouble now. Another report states that as soon as Mr. Truman learned of the news, he was approached by the Secretary of War, Henry Stimson. They briefly talked, but no one knows what about. Mrs. Roosevelt is said to be ready to leave for Georgia as soon as possible and make funeral arrangements for her husband. Harry Truman is said to be a likable man, friendly, and tries to get along with everyone. But he also has a no-nonsense streak about him. If he holds to normal, he will take responsibility for anything that he does wrong. Let's have a moment of silence for the late President of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. This has been the History Broadcasting System. We will interrupt regular programming if necessary. This has been Robert Knowles. This presentation of the History Broadcasting System Newsroom, The Death of FDR, has been brought to you by the History with r and channel. It was produced, directed, and edited by Robert Knowles. The script was written by Richard Simpson. The cast includes Robert Knowles as himself, Richard Simpson as himself, Jeff Franklin as himself, Mr. CCDV as Truman, Captain Trek as Office Worker. Join us again in two weeks as the History Broadcasting System presents another point in history from the newsroom. This has been Stone Loki, and you are watching History with R and R. Two weeks in a row with no near death experience. The writers must be slipping.